Good day and welcome back to Chemistry Videos with me, Clarissa Sorensen Unruh. We are going to need to talk about phase diagrams today. And phase diagrams have to be one of the coolest <laughs> diagrams out there. And really, the reason why I'm doing this is because there was a Pew Research um, study, I think, just recently, a uh, survey that asked Americans if they knew that water boils at a different different temperature at different altitudes versus whether it doesn't. Um, and like some ridiculous number of people got it wrong. So we're gonna talk about that. <laughs> it's, it's one of those moments. What does a phase diagram do? It basically has two axes. The two axes are pressure versus temperature. And what you get from a phase diagram, I'm going to loosely base this off of water because, actually, I'm not going to loosely base it off of water. I'm going to do water. Woo! It's not going to be perfect, but you'll get a sense of it. Okay. In terms of looking at this, what you kind of get is you get um, this Y, kind of a Y with attitude look about it. Okay. And what you have here is you have the solid phase here. You have the liquid phase here, and you have the gas phase here, okay? And past, you have a couple of points that we need to talk about. We have a point right here, right? We have a point right here, and maybe this is a little low for what is actually true for water, but that's okay. And then we have a whole different kind of um, phase past this, okay? And then we have kind of this idea of what would happen if I took a pressure at a certain temperature. So, and we're gonna label these lines as well. So, all right, let's say that that's my moment and we're gonna talk about these two as well. Okay, so those two points we're gonna need to talk about. Okay, so let's talk about not just what's going on here. What we can see just from the phase diagram to begin with is that as you manipulate pressure and temperature, you can manipulate the phase boundaries between the solid, liquid, and gas. So yes, at different altitudes, um, substances have different temperatures for boiling and for melting and those kinds of moments. So first thing off, let's clarify that. Yes, that happens. Um, the second thing that we need to do is we need to label some points on here and we need to label the lines. So really what we're gonna talk about in terms of the lines is we need to think about what these phase boundaries are, right? So between the solid and the gas, that's this line right here, we have a phase boundary that has the difference between the solid and gas phase changes, right? So as I go from a solid to a gas, that phase change is called sublimation. And between the gas and the solid, I have the process of deposition. This line is often called the sublimation line. Okay, and basically what it says is that different pressures and temperatures you can manipulate when the solid goes to the gas and the gas goes back to the solid. That's kind of the thought here. Okay, so this line right here is the boundary between um, the solid and the liquid. When a solid goes to a liquid, we call that process melting, which in your book, they'll also call that a fancy schmancy name, which is fusion. Okay, and liquid to solid, you would have the process of freezing, right? If you're gonna make water into a solid, you put it in ice cube dishes and put it in the freezer, which is an appropriately named contraption. I love that, okay? This line is often called the fusion line. Why it's called the fusion line? I don't know, it sounds fancy, right? So the fusion line is here, the sublimation line is here, Okay, the last line, which I've probably drawn a little bit too Y-ish, but you're gonna forgive me for that, 
is between liquids and gases. Between liquids and gases, we have phase changes as well, right? So we have between the liquid and the gas. When a liquid goes into the gas phase, then that's a process we call boiling. The fancy schmancy term for that is vaporization, right? Okay, and between the gas and the liquid, that's when you have water form on the outside of your iced tea glass on a hot summer's day. That is condensation, right? So these are condensing. Okay. This line is often called the vaporization line. All right, so this idea, does water boil at different temperatures, at different pressures or altitudes, which is the same thing to scientists? Uh, yeah, they do. So that's how you can manipulate the pressure and the temperature to basically do a lot of different moments here. All right, so having said that, what we need here is we need a little bit more in terms of what um, these other dots are, right? So we've labeled the lines, we need to label the dots. Okay, this first dot, I'm gonna just make this a star. I'm gonna put that star over here because I'm getting very crowded in my board over here. So the star, this star in the middle, is called the triple point. The triple point has to be one of the coolest points when you're manipulating phase changes because at that point, the substance is neither just a solid or a liquid or a gas. It is actually all three at once. And there are several videos online, um, on YouTube particularly, that, talk, that show you triple point. It's, it's cool, look it up, it's very fun to see. I might even tag one underneath this video on YouTube. Um, but they're very, it's just, it's a cool point, right? So it, what's actually true at the triple point is that it's all three phases at once. Awesome. All right. We also have here, I'm going to call this, I'm just going to label this because I can still label it. That point right there is called the critical point. And after the critical point, you have a new kind of phase, okay? Um, and this phase is kind of both a liquid and a gas, we'd probably think of it as something close to plasma, kind of, that idea it has liquid and gas properties. Um, but basically, this is um, a critical fluid. We, that's what we call it. Critical. OK. That's one term for it. Its properties have a lot of um, pieces in common with like plasma, not plasma that you get from your blood or whatever. I'm talking like gaseous plasma here. Okay, in terms of those points, we got those points labeled. We need to figure out what these two pieces on the bottom are, All right? And oh, actually I lied. I knew there was a super in here. This is a often, sometimes it's called a critical fluid. Sometimes it's called a supercritical fluid. I like the supercritical fluid. Kind of makes me happy. All right, so in terms of these two points, basically what I have here is I have a line going across that designates the outside temperature. I mean, sorry. <laughs> I can read my own graph. That designates the outside pressure. <laughs> so the outside pressure is 1 atm at sea level but it is not 1 atm when you go above sea level so that's where it starts getting interesting at higher altitudes like in albuquerque it, this would be slightly down it would be a slightly lower line and what you're seeing here is that wherever this line the outside pressure meets the fusion line and you go down then this point right here becomes the place it becomes the temperature at which fusion happens. So this would be what we call the normal boiling point.
it's called normal for this particular um, case because it, well, I've said the outside pressure was 1 atm. It's normal because that's where it's measured. If you're in Albuquerque, which is where I am at the moment, enjoying the beautiful balloons of Balloon Fiesta, um, you actually have a different boiling point. Kind of crazy. It might not be that different from the normal boiling point, but it's going to be a little bit different, okay? And in terms, oh, and I just totally lied. This is not the normal boiling point. Oh, whoopsie. What, what line did we hit, guys? I'm making mistakes today. It's okay. It's okay to make mistakes in science. That's actually part of the point. Okay. What did we say this was? Let's go back a minute here. What line did we hit here? <laughs> we hit the fusion line. That can't be the normal boiling point. I didn't hit the boiling line. It's actually the normal melting point, right? Oh boy, here we go. All right, there you go. Normal melting point makes a lot more sense. But yeah, still manipulated. Notice that the fusion line doesn't change very much, so the melting point changes less than the boiling point does. Okay, so let's go across here. Obviously, if this wasn't the normal melting point, or, or sorry, if this wasn't the normal boiling point and was the normal melting point instead, I got a little excited. And that right there has to be the normal boiling point. And that makes some sense, folks, because your boiling point should be higher than your melting point is, right? So if this was water, this would be zero degrees Celsius, and this would be 100 degrees Celsius. For those of you who are like, why is it zero right here at the origin? Usually the temperature is measured in Kelvin. So this would be actually 273.15 Kelvin. Okay, so let's go back a moment. You have the outside pressure. Let's go back and sum up to make sure we're all on the same page. You have the outside pressure right here. This is the outside pressure at sea level. One atm, I take, make a line straight across. Where it hits the fusion line is where fusion happens. That would be, when I bring it down to the temperature axis, that would be where the normal melting point is or the normal fusion point, right? And then, not. Not that anyone ever says normal fusion point, by the way. Don't use that terminology. And then you would follow that 1 atm across to the vaporization line and follow it down to the temperature. And that would be where vaporization happens, right? That's the temperature at which vaporization occurs, which we call the normal boiling point. OK, normal is for 1 atm. Apparently, in places like Albuquerque, we are less than normal, which, you know, we're right by Santa Fe, which is the city different. So, in terms of thinking about this, we would just have our melting point and our boiling point. It's not normal because it's not 1 atm. Okay. All right. And that is a phase diagram, folks. And I think we've labeled everything we can label. So, awesome. I wish you well. Until next time, I will see you again. Adieu.